Hey guys, it's Agatha here. Um, we're going to do another tutorial today. Uh, please like or uh, comment down below for uh, any feedback. We would love it. Also hit that subscribe button as well. So the f what we're going to go over today is um, the question that we're getting is what should my settings be for touch picks when I'm running my 360 photo booth? So what, number one, make sure you have your touch picks account set up and um, you're going to create an event, number one. So we're going to go through this just like if we were going to be setting up an event for, let's say, tomorrow's event or Saturday's event, right? So the first thing you're going to do is log into your account, go to events, and you'll have your list of events here. If you don't have any, no worries, it's just going to be blank. Um, first things first, you're going to um, hoover over this little tab here and you're going to cr um, create event from preset. Now, once you click on that, it's going to take you here. Now, what I like to use, um, whether it's non, I, I normally use this one because I use a manual. This one actually is supposed to say um, motorized spinner. So you can do, use this one if you're using a motor sp spinner or if you're going to do a non-motorized spinner, you can click on this one, but these are the two that you're going to be using for just the 360. Um, you also see that there's already preset ones with the spinner and the TV session, the slideshow. Um, so if you guys are doing that setup, then click on those. But if you're just going to be just doing the, the spinner with the sharing station, you're going to want to use these two right here, okay? Um, if you're doing just the sharing station, it's pretty self-explanatory, so you have these other options right here. So um, we're going to go ahead and select here, non-motorized spinner. I'm going to be using a manual booth. And we're going to hit next right here. Once we do that, you're going to label your event name. So if it's, I don't know, Christy's 15th birthday, that's what you're going to label it. And then you can do um, the birthday and um, that's how it's going to look like. And then once you're done, you're going to hit submit. So now that you hit submit, it will give you the QR code and this option to go to designer. So this option here is to go and actually edit your template. We're not going to go over that in this tutorial. There's a separate tutorial under designer. You can click on that and it'll go through the details um, what you need to know there. The QR code, this is what you're going to use to activate your event. And what activate means is if you're going to be shooting with your iPhone on your spinner, you're going to grab your iPhone, open up touch picks, and it's going to, right when you open touch picks, it's going to say activate. You click on that and it's going to give you the option to scan this code. This code is literally going to give you all the settings that we're right now going to preset um, for your event. So this is literally all the back end stuff for your event to run. Okay. So what I like to do is I always like to take a picture of this or I could, I'll show you how to get back to this um, later on. So now that we have this event going, we're going to start editing our settings, right? So number one, we're going to go to events. And you'll see here, I just created that event here, Christy's 15th birthday. I just created it today. It's on a test status because I haven't activated it. It'll show me the QR code. This is where if you like need to activate again, you're just going to click on QR code and you can access that. Um, and then you could start playing with your features. Um, so I'm going to just go back to the event tab. You'll see the gallery link. This is where your customers, um, like after the event, you can click on this and it will give you the list of all the photos, which is pretty awesome. Um, so just to show you really quickly, I'm going to show you this one. If I click on my finished event and I click on gallery, you'll see that there's every single photo presented here. And this public URL is what you're going to text over to your customer and they will be able to send to their, you know, to their whole student body if they wanted to. So that's all their videos here. I'm going to close that up. And um, if you want to download all the videos, you can do that, or you can literally just delete everything from your file, from your folder here. Um, 
what I like to do is for every event I always like to have a backup so what I'll do is I'll download them to my computer maybe make a Google Drive you can do a Dropbox or what we do is we do smug mug um, account and we'll have a separate uh, tutorial on smug mug and how to do um, online galleries and all of that um, branded under you so for this we're gonna go back to events and another way you can go is right here events and um, under data, this is the next section. Under data, that's where you're going to be able to capture, like, let's say, for instance, people's email addresses, people's cell phone numbers. Um, you'll literally have a link of every single phone number and, um, you know, whatever they sent. For this event, majority of it was all airdrop. So, um, but if you want to download the the little Excel files, you could just click on this, download it to com your computer, and then you'll be able to open it, and there will be literally like a list right here. Okay? So that's just another plus on this. If in case you guys want to have um, that as a feature, you know, data collection, the app will do that for you. Okay? Um, overlays, I'm going to show you another. Uh, right now because I don't have any overlays in there it's blank now for an event that already has overlays I'm gonna just show you what it looks like and this is how you check to see what application um, what actually what features you're gonna be using and what template is gonna come out with it so in this particular just for tutorial I, I made one um, so that you can see that this is the GIF overlay. This is this this is the orientation that I chose. This is the layout that I designed, and this is what's going to be displayed every time somebody does a GIF, right? Um, if I scroll down to boomerang overlay, this is what the boomerang overlay is going to look like. Same thing for photos. So if I want to take pictures and just do one photo, boom, that's what that's that's what it's going to provide. Um, same thing for videos. Same thing for slow motion. Each one has its own little design that you know we will preset prior to every event. Now, another question that I normally get on this is like, do I have to provide all of these templates? Because that's one, two, three, four, five templates that you have to make. No, you don't have to provide all of these. Now, like I said, this is just for tutorial. Um, in most cases, when people rent from me, I'm only doing the slow motion. Um, and even sometimes, sometimes I'll even offer the boomerang. But like I said, if you're going to be offering multiple features like this, obviously it's going to take you more time to set this up. So I would maybe um, recommend charging more. If you're going to if you're going to do all five, um, you know, features, charge more. Why not? People pay specifically just for boomerang. There's some people that do, um, you know, 150 just for the boomerang, right? And that's like on, on your regular photo booth. Now slow motion that's where 360s come in and it's like the new biggest thing the lowest that I've seen hourly is 250 per hour and that's like on the low end for like backyard parties and stuff like that or if you're just getting started and don't have the confidence yet to be charging you know five seven hundred dollars it's it's totally up to you and how you want to run your business now I have customers that do 50 per 250 per hour and I have customers that do seven hundred dollars per hour it just depends on the market that you're at. It depends on the clientele that you're going after. So everyone's going to be different. Okay, so I would say do some market research. See where you guys lie at. Maybe put yourself in the middle or wherever you guys decide to do. But um, you have options. Okay, so like I said, all of these um, templates, these are called photo strip templates or photo booth templates, boomerang templates or overlays. Um, they will be accessible um, for download just so you know. For all of you that have purchased with us, if you go to 360 Booth Expert, click on Templates, you'll have access to all of these templates for free because you've invested into us. This is one of our gifts of giving back to you. So we're constantly throwing new designs in here, and you could see they're literally like labeled one through, I don't even know how many numbers we have. But you can come here and just download it for free, and you can use these um, for different events. So if your customer is doing like, I don't know, like a baby shower or something like that, that'll probably be kind of cute. You just add it to cart, use that member code, um, that member promotion code that we give you. Um, that way you guys could just download this and it'll discount it to zero. So some people download them all together at once or some people just go 
um, by like per event. So you come here, download it once you download it, and then you can go through that. Again, that is in a different tutorial. So if you want to learn that, just click on designer. Okay. So now going back to events, and I want to show you the next tab. And this is the tab where everybody's asking, well, what are my settings supposed to be, right? Right now we just went over just the basic on what the functionality of each event can do um, and what touch picks can actually you know, provide you. Now this is where I'm not going to select on this one because this is I already preset my settings. So on yours, you're going to click on the gear and manage. So like I said, I'm going to click on this one because my all my settings are literally here. Um, and this is literally what I use for every single event. All I do is duplicate this event. So don't worry about having to learn all of this. Make sure you just maybe take a screenshot of this or you can take a picture on your phone and then on your end, copy these settings, right? So the only thing that you're not going to copy is your name of your event, obviously, because everybody's event is different. Um, and then you're not going to copy this. You're not going to always provide all five functions, right? If whatever you want to do, whether if it's just photos, then you can just do photos, right? If you want to do boomerang, you could just do boomerang. If you want to do just slow-mo and boomerang, you could totally do that too. So um, I know I'm going pretty quickly here, but I'm going to go back. Um, so the other thing that you're not gonna you're not gonna um, copy is this and this right here. My audio file, obviously, you're gonna change that because um, every every event is a different type of music. So you get to um, pick that. And if you want to go into a detailed tutorial on that, that's under music. Final thing that you're gonna change um, is over here. If you have any app backgrounds. I would say change that. If you don't have a background, that's totally fine. You can just hit that little X and just leave it blank. Okay, and that's a totally different tutorial too, and we'll go over that. So I'm going to start from the top. So number one, label your event. It is going to be English or your preferred language, up to you. Whatever country you're at, make sure this is super important. You leave that at that. So whatever country you're at, select that. I like my countdown to start at four, so um, I use GoPro and uh, uh, my iPad sharing station. So when I tap on my sharing station to enable my GoPro, um, it'll start, it'll initiate a little beep and it'll say four, three, two, one, and that countdown will go and then that's when I will spin um, my spinner and let it do its thing. I like the beep sound enabled because it's just giving me an indicator when to spin the booth. So I know when I hear that, I have four seconds to do the spin, okay? Um, we are going to disable this mirror overlay. We don't need that. If you are using a uh, iPhone or GoPro, um, let's say, for instance, you're using your iPhone, you're going to always want to use your rear camera. The rear camera is the best quality, okay? So iPhone 11, iPhone 12, or 13, you're going to use the rear camera. Um, if your GoPro, I don't know, let's say, for instance, your GoPro dies, you could always rely on your iPhone to um, finish the event, just in case. But you should always have your portable battery pack for that. Um, camera exposure, make sure you enable that. Okay. QR protection, do not uh, enable that. We don't need that. Just leave that part alone. That'll pretty much just give you the, act, the, um, the option to come in here and change things if you wanted to. Um, this will literally prevent you from doing that if you don't have a laptop or a computer. So just don't check, don't check on that. Um, printing, if you're not printing, just do no printing. Um, usually most people aren't printing. If you are, then you go print selection. Um, but usually it's no printing. Um, these are the options that we're giving our customers. For the showroom purposes, I do all five. But like I said, for, fo for actual events, I'll only do boomerang and slow motion. Okay, now my settings for boomerang repeats is how many times it's actually going to be, um, it's going to record and it's going to like bounce back and stuff. Boomerang speed, it's a level 2 speed, you can go up to 15, but this is how I like to do mine. Um, the boomerang bounce duration, the time, uh, anytime you guys ever need any uh, information on each one, you'll see it has a little question mark, so it'll literally tell you right here. So that's my settings for that. Um, this is for GIF, GIF number of photos. So that's literally four photos being taken and they put, they're put in a series and it's created a GIF. So it literally just go in a loop as a GIF. 
This is the duration.